Last week, we asked, why would Brian Koberger want cameras banned from his trial if he's innocent? So why would Richard Allen want his trial on tape? To answer that question, we want to welcome in our guests, hosts of the Murder Sheet podcast about the Delphi murders, journalist Anya Kane and attorney Kevin Greenlee, and criminal defense attorney Kirk Nurmi, who famously represented Jody Arias. Good morning to all of you. Thank you so much for being on the program. So let's start with the question, why might Richard Allen want cameras in court? Anya, I'd like to begin with you, please. Yeah, it's a great question, and thanks for having us, Julie. Sure. Um, this is one of those things where we have to remember the context. So um, Brad Rosie and Andy Baldwin, the two defense attorneys representing Allen, they both indicated that they're you know very media friendly from the start of this. Uh, prior to the gag order being issued, they were speaking to the press. They were giving statements. Uh, they were trying to put out their side of the story and their client side of the story. So I think that we can see this as part of that wider context of, of a defense team that's very much saying, hey, transparency is, is what we're trying to do here. And that serves the purpose of getting both uh, the media on your side and, and the public on your side because there, there's a sense, okay, they don't have anything to hide. Maybe we need to hear them out more. Um, so I think it's a really savvy strategy when it comes to uh, PR in this case. Oh, I'm with you, Anya. Absolutely. Great point transparency is key. I think we're in a state of affairs in America where that's what we need the most, especially in our criminal justice system. Uh, Kevin Greenlee, tell me, in addition to transparency, what about innocence? That's what I keep thinking about this morning, wondering if investigators got the wrong guy. What do you say to that, please? Uh, that's certainly the argument the defense would make. They, they maintain from the very beginning that their client is factually innocent of that, this crime. And certainly that would give them a motivation for wanting people to be able to see and fully assess all of these proceedings and have them take place in as transparent a manner as possible. That's also savvy and makes sense. All right. Kirk Nurmi, last but certainly not least, I want to go to you, please. You know, you are no stranger to high profile cases. You've had so much success as a trial attorney throughout your career. Famously represented Jody Arias. You deserve a medal uh, for that, by the way. Um, tell us, please, what do you think about this strategy of cameras in court? Is this good for him? I don't think it's good at all. And I really question kind of what the motives are because one, you know, we talk about supposedly savvy defense attorneys, but that's not what I see here. I mean, a defense attorney who's trying to protect their client's rights, if they had any exculpatory witnesses, what have you, would not want cameras in the courtroom. And Julie, when we talk about this subject, it's hard. We often conflate cameras in the courtroom versus public trial and public trial doesn't require cameras. My fear is that something more nefarious is going Going on because we have someone like Mr. Allen. Having been in rooms with individuals like Mr. Allen, I know that one thing that might be motivating them is this hubris, right? They think they're innocent. They're going to declare it even though there's no facts to support it. They're going to declare it to the world and they're going to regret it down the line. The other thing that's occurred. going on yeah, go ahead, please. is to is to use that forum for their own perverse needs. I mean, remember, this guy is intertwined with many different things. Maybe he's got ax to grind with other people. We know there were other individuals involved in this scheme. That's why we didn't know too much coming forward. So I'm a little curious of what this is ultimately gonna mean, but I don't think it's gonna serve Mr. Allen and there's no belief on my part that this is demonstrative of his innocence. I appreciate it, Kirk. And I'm glad you brought something up about whether anyone else is involved. That is the other question I would love to ask the three of you this morning. Could someone else have either done these killings and Richard Allen isn't part of it at all? Or could uh, there be a co-defendant, a co-conspirator? It seems that investigators are leaving open the door to that possibility. This investigation is still very ongoing. We're keeping the tip line open, the tip email open. We encourage everybody to continue to call in tips, not only about Richard Allen, but about any other person that you may have. We are going to continue a very methodical and committed approach to ensure that if any other person had any involvement in these murders in any way, that person or persons will be held accountable. Anya Kane, back to you on this one, please. Do you think anyone else was involved in the killings? 
Yeah, it, it's sort of fascinating to see those quotes from Doug Carter and Nick McClellan, the Indiana State Police Superintendent and the prosecutor in this case, because it really very much makes it pretty clear that at least they were open to the possibility of other people being involved. Here's the thing that I go back to, though, Julie. No one else has been charged. So I, I personally feel that if, if there was enough evidence to bring charges against a, a, another person in this case, then that would have happened. I mean, as we heard, the authorities were very much open to that from the beginning. Um, so the fact that that has not happened, um, to me, it's, you know, it, it's hard to say without seeing the actual case file or, or knowing everything that's going on in the investigation. But I, I think we can at the very least say that there's not enough evidence at this time to charge anyone else, um, because I really feel like that would have happened by now if there was. Sure. Appreciate it, Anya. Kevin Greenlee, to you, uh, you're also an attorney. Uh, you've dug into this case deeply. Uh, do you think that investigators might have missed something? Uh, well, I know that the defense has just dropped a motion kind of making that argument. They're talking about uh, wanting to have a Franks hearing in which they're uh, alleging that the investigators either misled or didn't do a complete investigation or deliberately left things out and a motion for that just dropped. So yeah, it, it's they're certainly making the argument the mistakes were made in this investigation and it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Thank you for that. Uh, and, you know, as we kind of wrap up this, Kirk and Ermey, I want to give you the last word here. Uh, in terms of whether anyone else is involved, what do you say to that question, please? I don't think there's anyone involved in the murder directly, and I wonder if murder was the real motivation. I mean, we have some of these people that were involved in this assertion that there might have been exploitation of children going on, and I think that's why we had the secrecy at the beginning. And I think we're probably going to find out that Mr. Allen was involved in activities of that nature, and that really motivated maybe an attempt to kidnap these children that went wrong. So uh, I think that could also explain perhaps the vindictive nature of Mr. Allen, perhaps wanting to point the finger at other people so I think there could be a web of of you know connected activities that aren't related to the murder but I don't think the murder directly there's anyone else involved I appreciate it Kirk you know and these were the burning questions in our minds uh, this morning what many of our viewers our wonderful courties were asking uh, and, and you all know a lot about this case I, I mean you know in Kevin and Anya you both especially the way you've dug in on your podcast the murder sheet podcast give it a listen everybody um, tell us please what else are you thinking about this morning what else do you think we should be thinking about as these motions are filed uh, and this case is advancing you know we're, we're at a very different place and we were last October at this time, as you know. Uh, Anya, to you, please. I really think it's just so important, Julie, for everyone to keep an open mind and go into this and, and just sort of like see how both sides present their arguments. I mean, this is, um, we're hoping that there's transparency in this case and that uh, cameras are allowed in. I mean, we'll certainly be attending pretrial hearings and, and you know, the trial itself eventually when that happens. Um, but we just think this is a really good opportunity for the public to sort of see how the justice system works. Um, and, you know, I think there's a tendency in true crime, people kind of lock into their theories and it, it's better to kind of just like hear different sides out potentially. Mm -hmm. Sure. Kevin, anything to add to that, please? I think the defense has just dropped an interesting motion. I think we all need to take a really close look at that as this day goes on. It will be a very interesting reading as they lay out their arguments for why their client is innocent. I appreciate it. And Kirk Nerman, do you think the defense has a good shot on this one? No, no, not at all, Julie. Uh, you know, the defense attorneys are simply doing their job. They have to protect their clients' rights under the Sixth Amendment, and perhaps they're trying to distract the court of public opinion with uh, the idea that there's a possibility of innocence. So when those jurors get in there, they might uh, be more open-minded to their side of the story. But ultimately, I think this is uh, smoke meant to distract from the fire and the true guilt of Mr. Allen. I will love hearing all of your opinions. I'm Kirk Nermy. Love what you're wearing this morning. A fine choice on this Monday, the, the white jacket, the <laughs> black tie. We're neck. twins. Exactly. I know. We we uh, we planned this this morning, everybody. No, we didn't. <laughs> uh, Kirk, always love seeing you. Thanks for waking up early uh, for us. And uh, Anya and Kevin, thank you both for making time for us as well. Would love to continue the conversation more on opening statements. Take good care. Too. Thank, you. Thank you. We're going to squeeze in a break, my friends. We're at the bottom of the hour. When we come back, we're going to shine our opening statement spotlight on the victims' families as we're speaking one-on-one -on -one with the author of the book, Down the Hill, 
all about the Delphi murders. Don't go away. Plus, later in our show, we're getting your reaction to this case in our social sidebar. We've asked you the question, is the right man on trial? Tragedy in the Hollywood Hills. Prominent therapist Dr. Amy Hardwick found fatally injured under her balcony. Her ex-boyfriend on trial for her murder. She had had a restraining order against him. Yeah.